Hello and welcome to the Focusing Way podcast, focusing for better living. I'm your host, David Battistella. The wind has shifted, we have reset our sails and are exploring new horizons with a new focus on success, leadership, and all things interesting to have more clarity, more focus, and to live a considered life. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And visit our website at thefocusingway.com. Our planet is based on physics. Every day we interact with, encounter, and come into contact with the tactile nature of being here. For anyone who is a seeker, we inherently sense and know there are unseen and benevolent forces working with us on our behalf. I'm talking about the law of attraction, and our guest today, author Jan H. Stringer, has been working with that principle, improving the lives of people in their personal and business relationships. Jan H. Stringer delivers. An enthusiastic, playful speaker, Jan delivers practical, solid ways for you to work smarter, build stronger alliances, and improve the quality of your business and personal relationships. Jan, founder of Perfect Customers Incorporated, has an international reputation for helping businesses to learn the art of creating a customer base of loyal, raving fans. Author of two bestsellers, Attracting Perfect Customers, The Power of Strategic Synchronicity, and Being Attraction, what love has to do with business and marketing. Jan is the founder of the Strategic Attraction STARS certification program for coaches, trainers, speakers, and anyone who wants to deepen their understanding of the Strategic Attraction system. And joining me now is Jan Stringer. Jan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, David. It's great to be with you today. Yeah, thank you. You know, your best-selling book is called Attracting Perfect Customers, The Power of Strategic Synchronicity. And the book, you know, I really enjoyed it. It's very informative and it's laid out to really give readers an essential business tool and the exercises to help them in their business. But what I wanted to just start with was were the words strategic synchronicity. How how would you describe being strategic about synchronicity? (laughs) Good question. I love that. Um, Well, here's what I discovered is that I created a, a strategy for attracting more customers that you would call a perfect fit. And so I have a strategic plan In fact, that's what I call it, strategic attraction planning. And it's something I write about in the book. And what I noticed is that when I am strategic or I have a plan, I have a strategy, which means I'm clear and I'm focused about what's perfect for me and the kind of relationships that I want to attract, that these out of the blue experiences start to happen. And that's what I call strategic synchronicity. First, I get clear and focused about what I want, and then I let the magic begin. So what I started to see, the reason I put those two words together in the, in the early days before, while I was writing the book, it was because some things you just can't plan for where it's going to come. But if I do the due diligence of planning, being clear inside of myself about what's perfect for me, the kind of relationships I want, then you have these weird things start to happen, you know, like, like, like a friend texts you and say, Hey, I want you to meet David Bottastella. You know, I think you two need to connect. You have emails or you that come in and say, you know, when's your next course starting? It's um, a lot of things like that would show up and that's what I call strategic synchronicity. Yeah, that's so cool how that sort of evolves and you know these synchronous moments when you put yourself in the right kind of space and this is sort of 
throughout the whole book, when you get into an attracting mindset or an attracting space, the kinds of magic that starts to happen. Can you share just a little bit of that magic? Like one example maybe of what you saw is like, wow, that was pure magic. Oh, let's see. So uh, this week, as a matter of fact, um, I wanted to really be of service to my clients. And so I stopped, I had a inspired moment last weekend to put out something on Facebook that that would draw the community of people that I serve have been serving in the past. I put a notice on the Facebook group, Hey, let's all get together for a call. And then uh, out of that call, people started to show interest and I was getting excited about, well, maybe even though there's things happening in the world, I bet there's still people that would like to come to one of my programs and so I, I did some strategic planning of my own to identify dates and times and when would I do it, just like I always have done. And just while I'm doing that, I got an instant message from somebody saying, hey, Jan, when's the next certification training program? One of my clients who lives in Russia would like to be certified. You know, it's, it, and we're like, wow, it's happening. And then I had another a message from somebody else that's a longtime client. Are you going to be doing another certification training anytime soon? And that was uh, just what I call strategic synchronicity. I started putting the the clarity, the focus together, the energy was right, and that kind of thing starts to um, send out a vibration, or as I call it in the book, it's like being a lighthouse. Your light shines when people are ready, they see your light. And so those are just a couple that happened just a few days ago. Wow, that's amazing. So just I'm just going to go to the other word that, you know, really matters here, and that's the word attraction. And you were really an early pioneer in this area of like attraction or uh, law of attraction. But can you describe for our listeners when you first realize that you have the power to attract? That where it, it happened before I had my own business, I had hours of VP of sales inside of a company and uh, I had been attending some workshops uh, where I was learning the principles of law of attraction for the first time. And they talked about it at the church that I went to as well. And these workshops were held through that uh, Unity Church. And they introduced me to some of the longtime great books that helped me to learn this this concept. Uh, You know, Catherine Ponder comes to mind, Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, Eric Butterworth, Spiritual Economics. Those kind of books were the very first books that I read and then these workshops and then attending the church services where they, they talked about these kind of um, universal truths, I would call them. And um, when I would go back to my office after doing this kind of in my personal life, I started to notice things like, Hmm, I like this client better than I like that client. Hmm. What is it about this client that I like? What is it about that client that if those were around, he would be a better client? And I just started to have those thoughts. Well, how can I have more like this one over here and less of this one over there? And those are my early thoughts about law of attraction in business. And uh, in the world at that time, I never heard anyone talking about law of attraction in business. So it was just me having those thoughts, and I started to apply them, uh, the thoughts about attracting more clients uh, in my own business life, just on my own. I wasn't teaching anybody. It was just something that I observed and started to see, hmm, I wonder if this will work now. And then I would try different things, and I had some successes with it. You ended up being interviewed for the film The Secret, and uh, which was, you know, explosive sort of discussion on attraction. Um, can you share what was in that interview? Actually, um, 
in that interview, I was interviewed by Rhonda Burns, and she's the creator of The Secret. It was her idea. And uh, just, I would love to tell you, just as in addition to that question, how I even got interviewed, uh, because uh, I had been out of town and I got an email, and you get a lot of emails that you don't know if they're legitimate, you know. You know, you're going to delete it, put it in the junk pile or what. And I got an email from Rhonda Burns, who I didn't know at all. And she was talking about there's a movie and I'd like to interview you, more of attraction, etc. And I started to delete it. But I'm like, there's something about this sounds very authentic. And so I read the email to my partner, who was um, my bus- business partner at that time, was also my husband. And uh, we we kind of read it over together and like, well, call her or respond and see what, what you find out. And sure enough, it was very, very legitimate. And they flew um, me and my partner, Alan, out to, I believe it was in Chicago, and just treated us like rock stars to do the interview. And... They wanted us to really focus on how law of attraction works in romantic partnerships because I had applied the same principles that I use in business to attract my my business romantic partner, Alan. And she wanted us to really focus on, you know, well, how do you use law of attraction for that? So that's what we talked about in that particular interview, the impact that film made on the world to accept this principle and concept of law of attraction was what mattered. Yeah, that sort of goes to my next question, which is how would you really describe from your perspective and how you've lived it, the law of attraction? It becomes part of you. Um, this, what I mentioned earlier, the strategic attraction plan, which is based on the law of attraction. I felt like law of attraction was such a large concept. I mean, when I was learning to the particular concept, mostly it was applied to attracting prosperity, attracting, um, I don't know, the kind of house you want to live in or place you want to move to, things like that. And I wanted to apply it to business. And so I wanted, what I wanted to do is kind of put, be able to get my arms around it. It was such a a big concept. And so I created this strategic attraction plan to help people to do that because uh, it gave, gave me and the people I've worked with a focus and allowed me to Uh, narrow the scope. So my scope for the work that I've always done is about attracting relationships. Well, I mean, relationships are at the heart of everything. (laughs) So even if you want to attract a thing like a a house, you need to attract the perfect fitting real estate agent, let's say, or person that's um, selling their home. So uh, I just narrowed the scope to attract relationships and gave people a way to do that. And that's what my strategy does. Can you, I mean, without getting into the whole, um, I I don't want you to have to give, give it away because I really would like people to buy your book and do the, these practices on their own um, because they're, they're amazing and they, really jumpstart you into a way of thinking and a way of looking at the world and a kind of a mindset that allows you to begin thinking about attracting exactly what you want. So with what I've just said, can you just talk about strategic attraction in those terms? Yeah, the strategic attraction plan is a five-step process. And uh, the first Part of it, really, the very first step is something people might have done somewhere else. Um, Mostly, I've seen people uh, want to get clear about what kind of relationship qualities are important to them. And when they're dating, for example, we might have that, that magic list. You know, well, if that man or woman has these qualities, that might be a good fit. But they don't 
go the step further. And my strategic attraction plan, it starts out in describing the kind of clients and customers you would love to work with, people that, um, you know, like I'm a coach. So people that take my coaching or pay my fees or um, buy my products or my books. Those might be qualities or they're fun, they're family oriented. I mean, you could go into lots of different aspects of the kind of people that I like to hang out with. But I wanted people to go the step further because I always saw that what really mattered in the most significant relationships of our life is that there's something that is so true, a core value that is so true in those relationships, that that brings them together, that causes them to stick together, to sustain that relationship. And so that's the next step of the attraction plan, what I call identifying what makes you tick. And so it take. I think the, the plan, the process of it helps people to get in their, their field of vision, that clarity if my perfect customer walked into the room right now, how would I recognize them? And that's a good starting point. And so the strategy that I created starts there and then it steps people through all the way to creating who would you have to be to attract that kind of relationship. And then I talk about being, and then I talk about attractive actions because, uh, which by the way, the fifth step of attractive actions is not in either one of my books because I learned after many, many times of working with lots and lots of people all over the world that it didn't go without saying, now you have to take action. <laughs> but it's so much better to take an action after you've completed the first four steps of the strategy because you're really centered, you're really clear, you're in touch with what's perfect for you. And I don't subscribe to the philosophy that maybe traditional marketing and marketers subscribe to. Uh, a traditional marketer, nothing wrong with it, it's just not my demographic. The way I select a client is different from someone that wants to do a demographic, for example. Traditional marketing's more uh, focused on advertising or demographics or um, marketing to, uh, you know, some kind of outward expression of what they want to bring to a certain group of people. But for me, I look at myself first. What's important to me? Because if it's important to me, it will be important to my perfect customers. Now, I need to know what is important to me. Sometimes we haven't, maybe it's just ingrained in us, but we've never really taken the time to think about it and write it down. What does make me tick? What does get me out of bed in the morning? What is so important to me that, I mean, I've been doing uh, my perfect customer business. I'm in the 20th year. What is so important to me that I was able to do that for 20 years? And I still love it. Mm. And so that's the kind of thing I like to help people tap into in their own businesses. Jan, what, what's the best way for people to get started with uh, strategic attraction planning? Well, I have a wonderful opportunity that is completely at no charge. And I'm going to give you the link. You can post it. But it's a... Uh, a little product I created for people to get started with. It's a special gift package at no cost. And it has a full module from my certification training program, the very first one, uh, the attraction plan, and a little bit more added to it. So that's in there. Plus, uh, you get a copy of my second book called Being Attraction, What Love Has to Do with Business and Marketing. And it's a PDF copy. You can uh, download it into your uh, Kindle app or you can put it on your computer, however you want to do it. And it's the whole book and it is a good way to get started to learn more about the strategic attraction planning process. Thanks a lot for that, Jen. I'll make sure we have the links to all of that in our show notes. 
Well, I can tell our uh, listeners that I've done this process with you, and it's it's completely eye opening, and it really uh, allows you to start to define things, focus in on exactly what you want, and one of the and and not only that, but who you want to be inside all of that as well. So there's there's a, a part of it that really has us look at ourselves, which I appreciate, and then the outside and what we want to be bringing to that. But the word that that comes into it too is um, perfect. So tell me a little bit more about why you use the word perfect. <laughs> you sound like our publisher. <laughs> when uh, I wrote the book with another, uh, who was my business partner, she and I wrote the book together. And uh, our publisher, Barrett Collar Publishing, I call him a, uh, it's a publishing company with a soul because all their books kind of have that, that soulful quality to it. And the publisher or the owner of the publishing company took one book a year to edit. And he chose ours that year. And so we had the benefit of, you know, some really quality um, advice and consultation from him. And he really quizzed the two of us about this one thing. Why do you want to use the word perfect? you know, that trips people up, you know, people are like, there's no perfect people out there. And so we did delve into our heart and soul um, to really about each, actually each word that we used, but perfect was one that we really um, just had to really soul search to see if that was the right word, because it's not about that there's perfect people in the world, but there are some people that are better for me to work with than others. And Mm -hmm. we call those my perfect fitting clients or customers. And so that's what we felt strongly about was to invite people to consider that not everybody's my perfect fit. I'm not meant to work with every, everybody in the planet and they're not meant to work with me, but there are, a certain number of people out there that is perfect for me to be working with. I love that it opens up our imaginations to look at a situation like, I mean, you can use this in like, what would be the perfect dinner right now? Or what would be the perfect next step in my day? Um, Or I'm sitting somewhere out and it's like, you know, what would be perfect right now? And that, that kind of, attracting space starts to sort of happen once you sort of enter this attracting space that you're describing so beautifully and your book and how it teaches people to do that describes so beautifully. Um, You know, I'm sure there's people out there who think, you know, attracting the perfect thing you want is only luck or coincidence. So what would you say to that person? (laughs) Um, I would say strategic synchronicity is it it does have a a taste of serendipity it does have a taste of kismet and luck and you know that just came out of the blue you know it does have all of that quality and that's okay Because I know when I do my strategic attraction planning work and I'm really clear about the kind of people I want to attract, that this sort of thing starts to happen more frequently. Previous, you know, in my, my, when I was in my career in in corporate uh, sales, sales management, and then ultimately a VP of sales, when I was in that endeavor working for other companies, I didn't have that concept. I wish I did, but there was probably some part of me. I think it's really uh, ingrained in most of us. It's just kind of a a natural thing. I just gave it a a label later on, but it's an instinct of 
knowing when I get into my zone, my right zone, my right place, doing what I'm meant to be doing, working with the right kind of people. When I'm in that zone, luck does start to happen. Mm. Serendipity happens. Synchronicity happens. And I'll take it. It's not like I'm going to go lay that, you know, a thousand dollars down on the table in the casino, but, um, it's the kind of luck that makes you smile and go, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, uh, Dr. Morgulan, who's somebody that I've followed for a very important part of my life of energy using Chinese 5,000 year old Chinese energy in my business and my life. He calls it a free fish that when, when in the Chinese philosophy, that when you're um, out there fishing, meaning you're taking an action, you're putting your pole out in the bait and you put your string out in the water, that sometimes, even though you didn't catch it on the hook, a fish might just flop out of the water into your boat. He calls that a free fish. And that's kind of what I see in my business, that sometimes if I'm doing all the right effort, and taking the actions and being the kind of person I'm meant to be doing the right things and working with the right kind of people. Sometimes one just flops on the boat and, and I'll take it. It's good. I totally. I'm going to um, echo what you're saying about Dr. Barry Margolin's work um, at energy for uh, Anyone who has it, check that out really needs to go check that out because Dr. Morglin has uh, brought back 5,000 year old wisdom and uh, teaches us to apply that in incredible ways in our lives. So I will just echo that that is another place to check um, for our listeners. Um, and that story is beautiful about the fish. Thank you for sharing that. What I what I wanted to say though is that having done your process, you know, I'm I'm a filmmaker, you know, I'm a creative, and so there's people out there that would think, well, how would this apply? This sounds good for business or for you know, um, people who have customers or, you know, how does it apply? For me, it was uh, very malleable and it works really well and for to apply it to what I do. But can you just talk a little bit about, um, you know? how it doesn't only apply to customers and businesses, how the law of attraction applies to anyone and the way you've set it up, you can, you can help anybody with this process, right? Anybody that is a person, <laughs> it, truthfully, there's a lot of ways that is, that it is related to a person, a relationship, not a thing. And that in my work, that's, that's where I focus. Uh, most of my focus is in helping business owners, people inside of companies, owners of companies, corporate executives, anybody that's in the business world to attract relationships. And those relationships can be anything from uh, employees or employers. It could be customers and different kind of customers. Like in my business, I work with corporate clients, but I also work with a lot of entrepreneurs. So the work that I teach around law of attraction helps people to kind of, as I said earlier, put your arms around it, get the clarity about what is perfect for me and my business to work with. And so that's what I try to emphasize with people when they learn the strategic attraction planning process, uh, sometimes they say, hey, I, I kind of changed your process up and I, I used it to get clear about the kind of new car that I wanted. And I said, well, that's great, but it's not a strategic attraction plan unless it's about a relationship. So why don't you shift it from the kind of car you want, all the qualities and characteristics of your perfect, uh, you know, red Volkswagen, <laughs> shift it to the kind of person you might want to buy it from, you know, like what kind of dealership or owner or uh, something. And that's what I really uh, focus on is that this is applicable to different kind of relationships. It can work for romantic relationships. I used it quite a lot 
Um, I remember uh, when I first started my business, I was newly married when I started the business. And I had really not used the strategic attraction plan quite as much until, I mean, I knew about it. I created, I did workshops, but when I started the business, I started using it over and over and over and over teaching people. And um, I realized that I was in the wrong relationship. Like that marriage wasn't a match for me. And I, I was kind of uh, embarrassed, you know, that I had made a mistake. But on the other hand, I, I wanted to walk my talk because I, I, I couldn't very well talk to people about attracting their perfect romantic partner when I didn't feel like I had one. And so this kind of work will reinvent your life. It will either draw to you the kind of people that are right for yourself it may also send some of them packing, <laughs> and that could be a client. It could be a personal relationship. But the goal is for me, David, and the and really the the whole principle of my whole work and service and business is that if you get the relationship right, you'll have right business. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I I am I know this only too well that. When the relationships that I was working with weren't right, nothing just nothing just went the way I wanted it. And so it was better to have that relationship go to where they were meant to be and let me, you know, work with the people that I was meant to be working with, the perfect fitting relationships. You told me a really great networking story one time when we were speaking. And uh, I think it was you had gone to a conference and you had a, a Yes, goal. I think could, I know the one you mean. Could you share that story? I'd love to. I love that story because uh, it was very impactful uh, experience for me. And uh, it was actually something that I did innately because I was in that new learning phase of learning about law of attraction. And I hadn't started my business yet. I was still a VP of sales. And I had just gotten uh, promoted in the company to start attending uh, conferences as the representative of our company. And the very first one that I was going to was in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Hills Hilton in California, which is a very well-known, prestigious hotel known by many celebrities they hold the oscar ceremonies there i mean there's all sorts of events that make that popular so i was kind of nervous about going to this fancy hotel i'm a gal from houston texas and uh i was going by myself so that was new for me i I had almost always traveled with some a colleague and so anyway the first night had an opening reception And I had made a goal, uh, an agreement with my boss. Uh, We set a goal together about what I was going to accomplish at that opening night ceremony. And so my goal was to collect and and connect with 50 qualified prospects. So it was an ambitious goal for Mm -hmm. one cocktail party. (laughs) And uh, also considering I'm a little bit, Uh, introverted uh, and attending a conference for the first time by myself. I didn't have anybody to distract me. So I walked, I I went downstairs, had on my new outfit and I was ready to go. And uh, the doors opened, the big double doors to the grand ballroom at the Beverly Hills Hilton. And there's kind of a a little landing before, and then the stairs stepped down into the room. But I stood on that landing and kind of looked around the room, and I saw, really what I saw were business suits, meaning all men. And this was a very male-dominated um, field that I was I was working in. And I felt a little nervous about that. And I th- so I stood there. I'm like, okay, I need a strategy. What's my strategy? What's my plan? How am I going to approach this room full of suits so that I accomplish my goal? 
And I looked around and I saw over to one side of the room, there was kind of a clearing where there weren't a lot of people standing. So my strategy was to go get my Diet Coke, my little plate of hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> and go stand in that clearing and apply the law of attraction. Like, like I've used it forever. I was like, okay, if you're going to work right now. And so I went over in this one area that nobody was standing in, and I stood there, really planted my feet. And I stood there, and I'm like, okay, since I'm a little shy, I'm just, just going to send my beam out. I'm going to draw people to me, and the per perfect people are going to come my way. And in just a few minutes, uh, a man came to me, and I saw by his name tag that he was the CEO of one of the largest, uh, there was a hotel management company, which was the market that I served. And I knew his name because he had, you know, we was well known in the industry. And he came walking up and we struck up a, a conversation. And that man became my wingman for the whole cocktail party. Wow. Because while I didn't know anybody there, he knew everyone. And he just stood right next to me and people, of course, would come up and he would say, do you know Jan? And he introduced me, Jan, give them your card. And then so-and-so, he would tell the other person, so-and-so, you give Jan your card. And she's going to call you because she, she uh, uh, I'm a client of hers, which he was, and uh, she's going to call you because their company, you need to talk to them. And he really set it all up you know, with every person that came up. So I accomplished my goal. I met 50 people that night. I walked out of there with a stack of qualified business leads. And that was when I realized this law of attraction thing really works. And so um, I attracted him and then he drew the crowd. So it was a wonderful story. I've, re I've remembered it so many times. If I can do that, what else is possible? And then when I started my company, um, I helped, you know, the, uh, tr my strategy was to help people to be able to be clear and have a plan uh, to their approaches. Wow. I just love that story. And it's, it sort of really does summarize how the intention of attraction, just like putting yourself in that space can really draw to you exactly, exactly what you had imagined. And, you know, with that success story, with your own personal success, you know, I'm sure that you've also contributed to the success of many other people without sort of naming names or are there any other kind of great stories that you've heard that you can share? Yeah. I mean, I, I have worked uh, with people all over the world. Most of my clients have been entrepreneurs and I, I get, I still get, I mean, I talked to a woman this week, but this particular woman, uh, the call that I hosted earlier this week, uh, she came, she's a, a past client. I hadn't heard from her in at least three years, but she came to this one call and then she and I texted a little bit afterwards and we had a conversation and uh, she told me that that one phone call inspired her because she said, Jan, truthfully, I was right at the place of giving up on myself and my business. I was there. And then I came to your call. And then um, I talked to her a little bit. We, we reviewed her strategic attraction plan and, and added some new things, started a new one, actually, and got her thinking about, well, what's possible now? What's perfect for me? And the very next day she texted me, she had signed her first new client in two years in the middle of a crisis. Wow. So, you know, that's just this week. I get those kind of reports all the time. Um, I have people who um, have attracted just almost, they can't believe it's so magical that, you know, they, Jan, I did an attraction plan with you. And the very next day, I'm, I'm 
sitting in front of somebody and he's almost saying back to me some of the things I had just written on my plan. So I get those kind of stories a lot. And I've had those kind of stories my own personal self um, where I use the attraction plan for myself. I've really integrated in the way I think. Initially, you start writing it on a piece of paper. And that's how you learn the process. You get used to it. But after a while, when you when you start to rethink and you start to mentally think in this way, it starts to happen for you. Yeah. Like you become it and you've integrated it. And it helps to write it on a piece of paper from time to time or add to what you've already written. But the real reality is what it does is it shifts your mindset and it shifts who you're being. And I found the shift in being to be one of the most impactful things that people see. Um, I was working with a gentleman earlier in the week and uh, he was wanting to sleep to his business. He had a, a network marketing uh, product that he sold and he wanted to attract people that would sell uh, along with him. So he called those business leaders. And when we got to the fourth step, the attraction plan, which was about to declare who you have to be or who you get to be to attract what you really want, it was obvious to me that he needed to be a business leader himself, but it wasn't obvious to him yet wow and i said well it's kind of like the answer is the same as who's buried in grant's tomb it's that simple and finally the lights went on he says oh you mean i need to be a business leader myself mm. and, I went, and i went ding 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 yes exactly oh. is that when when he got that he shifted who he was being. And that's what I found has been most important to people to learn that it's not about do, do, do. You know, it, a lot of people think to be successful, I need to do my website, do, do my business cards, do my this, do my that. And I said, well, that's all important, but who do you need to be first? Mm -hmm to start standing in the place that you want to be seen as now before you do all that. Shift your being first. Step into the being of who you want to be seen as, how you want to be seen and heard. And that create that's about creating your being. And so I, I am instruct and coach people that every morning, in the morning, when you're starting your day, that's a perfect time to create. Who am I going to be being today? And sometimes when we wake up in the morning, uh, we may not be in the perfect place of being of how we'd want to be seen. And so by working with some of these principles, you can shift that being and then step into it. And then you're, you're ready to meet and greet your world and your people. Oh uh, yeah, that's fantastic. No, that the definitely getting on a morning platform and setting uh, the the day is is critical to um, continuing that momentum that you build from the moment um, you start the new day. And it just I, as I'm listening to you, I just can feel all of the rewards that you've received from this work over you know 20 years of uh applying something you you know co-created and really devoted um time to and what i'm wondering right now is you know the thing um you want you want or you would hope that people take away from your work uh what i I want most of all is to serve people to let them know that they can have what they want. They don't have to sacrifice. They don't have to suffer. They don't have to endure jobs that make you feel like you're checking your soul at the door to get a paycheck. I love to work with entrepreneurs because so many of us, <clears throat> have worked for companies to get that paycheck and 
And and I know when I was a corporate VP of sales, I learned so much and that was a valuable experience. I paid a toll physically because it wasn't really the right fit for me. Uh, I learned what I needed to learn. And then at some point, it was time for me to go out on my own and to apply that in a way that was a fit for me. And so that's what I really hope uh, that people gain from what I'm sharing is that you can have the kind of relationships that are a perfect fit, whether you're working for somebody or whether you're starting your own company or whether you're, you're just applying it to your own personal relationships. It, there is a way to give and give up suffering into that struggle and stop blaming other people. And that's a big part of the attraction plan is that I, when I do that attraction plan, I give up my right to blame and complain because I know that if there's something that I'm not having in my world, it's only because I haven't been clear and specific about what I want. And so that's what I hope people learn is how to attract those customers, how to have the business you love, and how to get the right relationships in your business so that you are successful. I love that. I just, as I'm, as I'm listening to you, I can only be grateful and I'm so inspired. Maybe, Jan, you can share where people can find out a little bit more about you and your work and um, how to get in touch with you. Yeah, there's there's a n- numerous ways. I'm on Facebook. You can I have two pages. One is Attracting Perfect Customers. You can go there. You can search under my name, Jan Stringer. And I have another book that I've written called Being Attraction. And that's spelled B E E B E E hyphen I N G Being Attraction. What love has to do with business and marketing. And uh I also have a page on Facebook for that too. I'm on LinkedIn, so you can find me there. And my website is perfectcustomers.com. And uh, if you go there, I have a free gift waiting for you. It's a uh, e-guide, e-guide that is about how to get in touch with what makes you tick. And that's the the heart of all relationships. Wow, Jen. Um... I can't thank you enough for taking the time today to uh, share your wisdom and uh, wise words, advice, years of experience toward helping people get, you know, into that place where they want to be. Thank you so much. And thank you, David. You you are just a, a light yourself. So I'm glad that I attracted you and I appreciate the invitation to do this podcast today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And visit our website at thefocusingway.com.